Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Today we're going to do something a little different. I am always interested in getting knowledge to you the best way I can. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, from way back recently, and, and I told her what I did for a living, and, and I said, you're not laughing that I'm a pastor. She said, well, you've been teaching all your life. Even in middle school, you was teaching us. In high school, you were teaching us. So you've always been teaching. <laughs> so we sometimes we don't even know what our call is, but we're already doing it, don't we? Yeah. So today, we're going to begin to talk, and we're going to have a panel again, a roundtable discussion. I will lead this discussion, and we're going to talk about several things. The first thing we're going to talk about is the call of God, how we receive that call. I think it's important that we talk about those things so that folk can understand that it's not as dramatic as we think it is. And that perhaps God's already called you and given you your assignment. You just got to get up and go do it and stop waiting on God. So let us pray. Father, 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 oh, how we love you, how we praise you, and how we lift our hands before you. How we adore your name, El Shaddai, yes, Adonai, oh my God. How wonderful is your loving kindness in all of the earth today. Lord, we ask as we partake of a spiritual conversation, we ask that you would come be in the midst of us. Help us to know our calling, which is sure. And help us to know the assignment which you've given each one of us. Because when we know the assignment, we can get about the business that you called us to be a part of. No confusion, no misunderstanding. Just be about my Father's business. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I remember when Mary, the mother of Jesus, after they had been uh, for the Passover, they, had, they were on their way traveling back home and and Jesus had gotten lost, Mary said. They didn't know where he was. He had stayed in the synagogue to preach to uh, the men in the synagogue. And he was working away and preaching and doing all those things. And Mary couldn't find him. They'd gone two days. Somebody say two days. Two days. And did not know where Jesus was. And so they went back. Mary went back to the synagogue and said to Jesus, Jesus. Where, are, where have you been? We have been looking for you. And Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary, I had to be about my father's business. That no matter what your assignment was, no matter what you're doing, my assignment is to be about my father's business. And he called me to teach and preach the gospel. And that's what I did. There was a crowd. There were people. There were exactly the formula for me to teach what God had given me. I love that word. I love that when you know your assignment, you can say to others, I am about my father's business. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Elder Juan if he would read uh, Ephesians for us this morning. I want you to start out reading verse 11 and go down to verse 20. It's quite a bit, so when you get tired of reading, we'll, I'll pick up after you. The word says, Ephesians 11, mm -hmm. and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we can come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, mm -hmm. unto the measure of of the statues of the fullness of Christ, mm. that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine mm. Mm. by the sight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they live, wait to deceive. Mm. Mm -hmm. But speaking the truth and love mm -hmm. may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, mm -hmm. from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint 
supply of mm -hmm. according to the affectional working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, um, alienated. Mm -hmm. alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Oh, yeah. Who being past feelings have given themselves over unto that severeness to working uncleanness mm, with greediness. 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't know nothing about Christ mm -hmm. if that's what you're doing. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, lift out verse 11 to you because there has been, as many things have been, Mother, there has been such confusion in the body of Christ concerning the spiritual gift or the fivefold ministry gifts that God has laid upon the church. God gave this to the church for oneness. Somebody say oneness. 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 He gave these, uh, these different gifts because each gift has an assignment. Somebody say assignment. 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 Oh, this is good this morning. Every gift is not the same. Every gift will not work in another person as it works in me. So if I teach differently, it doesn't mean that the next person is not teaching correctly. Mm -hmm. It simply means as long as they're giving you the essence of what the Word of God is saying, it means that they may have a different style, a different way. Some hat, some stomp their feet, some hold their ears, some do a lot of things. But the most important thing is, the are word. we conveying the word of God yes, to the people of God? Amen. 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 Let me say first of all that every one of these gifts were given to us for, for, for number 12, for the perfecting of the saints. The gifts were given to you and me, not for me, but for the body. My gift was given to me to be used to perfect those that I come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Your gift was given to you to perfect those that you come in contact with. Are you hearing me? Amen. The apostle has not passed away. I repeat, I'm like on a microphone in the principal's office. <laughs> the apostle and the prophet have not passed away. Amen. Amen. They are still spiritual gifts that are in operation to death. If your church is not operating in it, that may be a doctrine that you all have selected. But just because you don't have it in your church don't mean it has passed away. Mm -hmm. I just need to say that right now. And I got documents to prove it. Because I'm an apostle. And God called me to that position. And I told him I wasn't that. He says, you've been operating in that gift for many years. You wait until the time comes that I will have you anointed to mm -hmm. that gift. And he did just that. It took three or four years, but he finally got me to the place where I could walk under the anointing of the apostleship. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. He gave some to be prophets. There are many, many false prophets out here today. Yes, Amen. There are yes, many sir. false teachers. But you see, the gift of prophecy uh, in the word, in, in the fivefold ministry gift, is harder for you to discern than it is a, a preacher. Because you can follow me and tell whether I'm giving you the scripture correctly or not. Mm -hmm. But I can come to you and say, thus saith the Lord for you. And you don't know whether I'm telling the truth or not, except mm -hmm. by a discerning spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. Are you with me today? Yes. And so all of a sudden has come up these prophets in these last and evil days. And some of the words they're preaching are just plain lies. Mm -hmm. Plain lies. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. Then you have the evangelist, which is still here and not being used to its fullest. Every Sunday morning, we ought to be out witnessing the people to bring somebody to church before service. We ought to be trying to. That is the most impactful gift right now in the ministry. It's the evangelistic ministry. The evangelistic ministry is here to show us to take us where we need to go, to show us that there is a place yes. 
I know a man. Come with me. I'm not the way, the truth, and the light, but I know who is. Yeah. And oh, by the way, let me tell you what he's done for me. We overcome by what? The blood yeah. of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So our word has to be scriptural, spiritual. And we got to give that testimony to show that only God could have done that for yes. us yes. through the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we know these gifts are still in operation. We know that the pastor and the teacher is still here because I'm here. You know I teach, you know I pastor. So those gifts are still in operation. There are many that say that apostleships passed away with Paul and those, and when they left, the apostleship left. But the scripture says that heaven and earth is going to pass away. Yes. But the word of God will never pass away. So what God has spoken in this word through others will not pass away. For those of you who say that the apostleship is the Old Testament, let me tell you, that the book of Ephesians is a New Testament. Amen. And Paul was in it. So if Paul is an apostle of the New Testament and those that are with him, then New Testament prophets are still in existence today. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Beware of the prophets. Uh, Timothy will tell you, be careful, beware of them. Because they come with false tongues. They come with sweet words. Amen. Some of us are so desperate and so insecure that just getting a sweet word will turn our head. Hmm. Brother Brian said this morning that our assignment today is that we would stay the course. I like that. Stay the course. No matter what happens outside of the church and whatever, we are to stay the course. Somebody say that. Stay, stay the, the course. course. Amen. Because by staying the course, we're staying with God, and with staying with God, we know that He's going to bring everything through. Don't we? Yes. we know He's going to see us through this situation. Amen. Why did He give us these gifts? For all of you who are out here acting like you something special because you were pastor, acting like you the bee's knees because you prophesied. He didn't give it to you so you could be pretty. He didn't give it to you so your head could swell up. Somebody read, uh, said to read verse 12 and 13 out loud for me. To equip his people for works of service. He did what? To equip his people for works of service. So he did this to equip all of us, right? Amen. To have the gifts. Yeah. For work of what? Service. Yes. Our role is to serve. We are not saved to sit and to sulk. We are saved to serve God. All right, continue. So that the body of Christ may be built up mm. until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the full Whole of measure. Till we all grow up. Till we all get to that stature where we are no longer eating or uh, drinking milk, but we are eating meat, able to discern and to move forward with what God has given us. Because the kingdom must come forth. Are you hearing me this morning? Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Everybody got to know about faith. We all got to stand in faith. Believe in God. If God is in me the hope of glory. I have to live in faith. Amen. How can I walk in faith. With God not walk in faith if God is in me. God is faith. Or Jesus is faith. Nothing can be done except through faith. Everything is done by faith, is it not? Yes. You're going to overcome by your faith. You're going to lead by faith. You're going to trust by faith. So everything is done by faith. And if we are going to be <coughs> saints of God who lead others. Now, I, I have taken you from salvation to restoration to backsliding to the posture of a Christian who is always to be grateful. I've even taken you to the consequences of what you, what happened when you don't follow God's words. And I'm still dealing with consequences now in my heart. Yes. That everything I do will be judged. Yes. Amen. Amen. God don't need a little book. He, he, he knows. He keeps account of what we've done. Are we progressing? 
if I did that two years ago, am I still doing the same thing? Then I'm not progressing, am I? No. Nobody should have to tell me I haven't grown. I should be able to see that I'm doing the same thing. And if I keep doing the same thing, I keep getting the same results. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Until I come to the unity and the knowledge. God wants us to know what he has given us. He's given us great and precious promises that are for each of us by faith if we simply believe. Number 14, this is why he gave it to you. I'm just giving you an overview now. Why did he give us these gifts? Everybody didn't get the five-fold ministry gift, and that's okay. You got spiritual gifts, though. You may have the spiritual gift of prophecy where God at any time can give you a word of prophecy, but you don't sit in that office because the prophet or the prophetic is an office. Like you go to your office every day. I'm a pastor. I have hours. I stand in the office of the pastor. God may give you a prophetic word, but you don't have to be a prophet. There are times when God just gives us words because he knows that we will take that word forward. So I'm, I'm trying to deal with you this morning about where you are in your life, in your ministry. Many of you have not gone back to church. Or you have been slothful in how you go back to church. You might go because somebody said something to you about it, but you're not really there. So when Brian, when Brother Brian said this morning, I hear the Lord saying to us that we must maintain the course. That was a prophetic word. Yeah. Yeah. We must stay the course. Maintain the course. Don't get off our course. Do we know where God is taking us? We should because I'm constantly telling us. And if we know where we're going, we know we're going by faith in Jesus Christ and not by our sight. <clears throat> so why? This is the last piece to this. Why is he doing it? He can just leave us out there and let us just go willy-nilly. God wants us to have the fullness. Everything that he desires for us, he wants us to have it. Isn't that good news? Amen. Amen. He wants you to have every precious promise he has set aside for you. Verse 14 is pivotal. Why is he giving you so you will have the statue of the fullness of Christ? That we henceforth no more. Somebody say no more. No more. Be children tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive you. <laughs> because you try to intellectualize God with what you think you know and you don't even know. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit tell you what God is speaking to you so you don't get it wrong. I, I, I'm convinced. Why? And I think I said it last week. I talked about worship and the sweetness of worship and the, and the love of God that comes forth through our worship to him. And I kept asking God, why do most churches not go into actual worship? Mm -hmm. Is it because they don't have enough time? They got a second church service and they got to be out by this time? Or God is because the people don't want uh, the pastor that take too much time in worship and praise. And God said, no. It's because of fear. Mm -hmm. They fear what happens when you enter into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. They don't know what will happen. You remember when Moses went to the went up to God and came back and those idiots had, had, had made some uh, statues mm -hmm. and idols before God? Mm -hmm. God got angry with them and said, Moses, tell them to come to the edge of this mountain and meet me there. They got together and said, no, we're not going to meet God. Moses, you're going to meet him for us because he mad. Mm -hmm. They knew enough to know they had upset God. So Moses, you go in our place and meet God for us. But we don't want God to do to us what we know we deserve. Is anybody listening? Amen. Amen. There is great knowledge in the word of God that we get when we walk according to where God has told us to go. 
It's easy for me to look at somebody else's ministry and see their clothes and their music and their keyboard player and all of these fancy things and say, oh my God, I need to be like that. There's always a propensity to be like somebody else, isn't it? You may say, oh, I don't want to be like them, but you like what they're doing. And in order to, 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 be, to do what they do, you got to be like them. But that is not God's best for us. God's best is that he pulls out of me the best of me. Amen. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. And that is what God wants for each one of us. So the fivefold ministry has a purpose here. A great purpose. Then Elder Woods came behind Brother Brian this morning. They were prophesying. And Elder Woods said, I agree with Brother Brian because the world has gone mad. We've gone to hell in a handbasket for all practical purposes. Every day there's a death. There's a strange killing for no reason. We value no one's life. We place no value in human life anymore. And so God has now given us over to a reprobate mind to do the things that we ought not to do. Anybody ever heard that scripture yeah. before? Yeah. This is what we're doing as a, as a body of Christ. Many of these people are Christians that are doing this. And doing it in the name of Christ. When they ran up in the uh, 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 Capitol and they broke in and they were standing before Nancy Pelosi's desk and they raised their hands and say, we invoke you, Jesus Christ, in this place. How are you going to invoke the name of Jesus with what you just done. Yes. There is madness going on, sickness going on, all kinds of evil works are going on. And I say to you, it will not get better. The purpose of our prayers is that God will protect the saints. Yes. Is that God will continue to bring into the kingdom as we go out those who need to be saved. That young man said this morning, pray for me. The next question would have been, are you saved? Mm -hmm. Are you walking with God? You could have been there all morning long ministering and had church right there. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Because everybody that says pray for me don't know the Lord. And it's an opportunity that God has given us as saints to go before him. And to help people see who Christ is. So there is a calling in your life. Ephesians talks about the calling. It talks about preparing God's people to serve. What ways can we serve the body of Christ? Remember we're doing it in the name of Jesus. But we're serving God's people. How do we serve God's people? Anybody have an idea how, how they serve God's people? Serve those who are sick in the hospital. We serve those who are sick. That's service in the name of Jesus. We go, uh, and, and if we know the Lord and believe in healing, we go in the name of Jesus to heal. That's service. What else is yeah, it? Help the unsaved. You, 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 you can't help the unsaved, but you, you can go can get, them. get them. Yeah. yeah, you go try to bring them in. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. Anybody else know any way to serve God? Because if you don't know how to serve God, you certainly won't know your God. What else do we do to serve God? Help the poor. Help the poor. Help the downtrod. When I was hungry, you fed me. Help the homeless. When I have no place to live, you clothed me and gave me shelter. Yes. This is God. What we are now and should be is we are the arms of Jesus right now here on earth. Why, where is he? In me, helping me to move forward and do those things. Is everybody with me this morning? Amen. And while we're doing it, we're building up the body of Christ. We're building them up. We're not looking at what they don't have and the negativity in them, mother. We're looking at greatness coming out of them. You can look at a person and God will tell you what to say to that person to help bless them. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. 
Because in order to, to win these people, we got to bless these people. There's an old saying, if you give me a fish, I'll, I'll eat for a day. But if you teach me to fish, I can eat for a lifetime. So our job is to teach people the ways of God and the word of God so that they may stay connected to God on their own. Are you hearing me? And we're doing it for the unity of the faith. We're drawing people to God. What was it in your life that has, has moved you to the point where you know that you must walk by faith and not by sight? Huh? What is it that's happened in your life? Has anything happened? Let me put it that way. I, have, I can say longevity for me. Longevity has told you yes. that you got to walk by faith. Yes. And longevity, you mean age-wise? Yes. yes. That God has kept me. He, God has kept you. Yes. And that's why you walk by sight. That's right. I mean by faith. faith. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. What is it? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes, he did. He did. He did it. Mm -hmm. Anybody he, else? He protected me. There are many situations I look back in my past where I should have been dead. Mm -hmm. I know I should have been dead. Mm -hmm. But I know God had his hand on me. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, 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 and the angels that I know the words that he sends to us, mm -hmm. you know, protected me from that bullet when it went past my head. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Old song says, God has smiled on me. Yes. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good. He's been good to me. Because he's been good to you, you need to walk by faith. Right. Trusting in his holy word. Why? Because he's never failed. Me yes. yeah, brought me out of darkness. Brought light. you out of darkness, didn't he? Yeah. And when we begin to think about these things, our soul begins to wake up, doesn't it? Amen. When I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, I can dance, dance, dance all yeah. night. Because I recognize that it wasn't anything I've done. Yeah. I recognize it was his goodness, his mercy, yeah. and his love that has set me free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I tried it my way. Yeah. I couldn't do it. The more I tried, the worse it got. You ever tried, tried, tried something and said, I'm going to try it this way? <laughs> and it kept failing? Mm -hmm. What does that tell you when something keeps failing like that? Mm -hmm. Time to go another way, isn't it? Yeah. You need to speak a little louder. Turn around. To, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, for people to hear or share. Time to turn that thing around, isn't it? Somebody looking right now under the sound of my voice, listening and seeing me, knows that it's time to turn that thing around. Yeah. Whatever it is that is impeding you, you need to begin to walk by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible. You're not going to please him without faith. Amen. No matter how much time you give or how many people you bring to church or whatever you may do, if you don't do it in faith, God's not pleased with it. Well, why? I did everything else he said. No, we have to do everything he said. He didn't say you could do everything except walk by faith. That's the pivotal thing that we must do. Why is it so difficult, do you believe? For us to know Christ, to love Christ, and then at times not be able to lift ourselves up to walk by faith. It'd be hard here because we don't know the word. Brian says it's hard. We're hard headed. Steve says we don't know the word. We want to do things our way. Yeah. We want to do things our way. Your way, not the way. Not the way, not the right way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We think we can fix stuff. Yeah. And God don't need our help. Why do we think we can fix stuff? I don't, know. I don't think that that's any particular gender or, or personality type. I think we all think we can fix stuff, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got this one, God. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. I got it. Back. No, you don't. You ain't got it. You don't have it. For we walk by faith. We walk by a God that we cannot see, holding on to a promise that we've heard that He promises will come into fruition for my life. So I'm hoping on a promise. We 
we are hoping on the promise of it. But the good news of that is that he's already shown you samples of what he can and has done for you. Has he done? Amen. Amen. Anybody ever been at the last leg and, and, and about to give up on something when God came through right on time? Amen. Amen. And showed you exactly what he meant when he said, be still and know that I am going to yeah. be still. Don't move. Don't, don't get off course. Act as if what you ask me for don't mean a thing because I've got it. When you bring it to me, I've got it. Somebody say, I've got it. I've got, got it. it. And if he's got it, He's got it. He don't need you to help him. And he will perfect those things that are concerning us, won't he? So now, here we are. We are, we, we got our ministries, we're here to serve. That's what we understand. See, when I was growing up, nobody ever told me that I became a Christian to serve. I was told I became a Christian so I wouldn't go to hell. And that's a part of it. And so consequently, you have many, many people today who do not work in the ministry because they, would, they never understood what their role was once they got saved. They didn't understand that working out that salvation part. You got to work out your salvation. <laughs> you got to find out what it is you've been saved for and to. And then you got to go to work and do that. I can't do it for you. Nobody can. Only you can do that because you're the one God gave it to. Are you hearing that? He gave it to you to build up the body. Your peace is not to run anybody down. Your part is not to talk about how fat somebody has gotten or how thin somebody has gotten. God put you in position to build up. Somebody say build up. Build, build up. up. Not tear down. Amen. Not tear down. Thank you, Elder. Yes. To build up the body of Christ. If you can't find nothing good to say, don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. mm. Why are we doing it this way? Because when we do it God's way, we bring unity. Woo! We bring unity in faith. In faith, it's by faith that we're going to unify. Mm -hmm. Elder Woods got his gift, and he's beginning to operate in that gift. And once he starts operating this gift, we'll know what it is, won't we? Mm -hmm. We'll know exactly what that gift God gave him, that gift. I know what all of you, at least one of everybody in here is gift. Because God shows pastors that. Because we're the ones that's got to, you know, move these gifts around for them to work in the ministry. Sometimes you've been placed in positions where you had no gift or, or desire to work there at all, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Understand that that's a temporary position. The ministry has to go on if it's small, so we have to use people where we can. Don't begrudge your pastor because they asked you to go work in the children's ministry. I don't even like children. Maybe that's why God's sending you to the children's ministry. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe God's about to perfect something in you you didn't even know you needed. You don't even like children. How are you not going to like children? They're part of the body of Christ. So we prepare the people for service. We build them up with our gift and our word, and then we begin to unify them by faith. And then finally, we all come to the knowledge. That's when everybody is on one accord. Can you imagine what would happen in the kingdom of God if we all were in one accord? Mm -hmm. The enemy wouldn't have a kingdom. We would tear it down immediately because we're walking with the Father in us. So what are your qualifications for you to be used by God in ministry? Do you know what a qualification is? Skills. Mm -hmm. What are your skills? What are your skills? Well, I don't know what your skills is. Do oh, okay. you know? What will be a qualification? Qualification is going to be the same for most of them, mm -hmm. even without the specialization. You're always going to have general uh, qualifications before we get down to the the specifics. Understanding of God's word. The understanding of God's word is important. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Being a willing vessel. Being a willing vessel. Oh my God, that's so important. Yes. Fellowship. That, 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 that fellowship. That we're going to start out in this ministry and I, I, I don't want to work in the children's ministry. I done told her that 
She keep putting me in there. I won't come to church. Oh, you hurt. <laughs> Hurt you yourself. hurt yourself. Hurt yourself. You, you have to be willing in the kingdom of God to go where he says go and do what he, he says, says do. Yes. And many are not willing to do that. But to, to become the fullness of God, we got to know what he wants and be willing to go do it. Mm -hmm. I love what you all have said. For the fellowship, why are we doing it? So we all become one. In that God's purpose, ultimate purpose, is we all become one. Mm -hmm. How can we all become one? We are seven, eight, ten different people. How are we going to become one? We're going to become like minded. Becoming one doesn't mean that mother and I dress alike. Doesn't mean that we speak uh, 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 the same kind of tongues, but it means that we give God glory, that our emphasis is on God. Our purpose is to please God, to serve God. And that oneness brings unity mm -hmm. in the ministry. Yes. We know, we and that, that if, if Ron comes to church uh, picking on Sandra, which Sandra used to picking on Ron, <laughs> but if Ron comes to church one day picking on Sandra, Elder Steve going to hear him and say, now are we edifying each other? He's going to get us back on track, isn't he? Because we don't know, but when we start playing the dozen, I used to call it, on people, we don't know at what point we have gone over the line. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't know at what point we've said too much, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's best to keep your conversation seasoned with love. Make sure that what you're saying is not something sarcastic that you've heard, but that you are truly edifying Elder Ron. Let me hear you edify Elder Ron right now. Let me hear you say something to edify him. Elder Ron, we have great wisdom. Mm. Always pray for everyone. We know this. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. One other thing, Elder Ron is faithful. Elder mm. Ron is faithful, isn't he? Yes, he is. Woo, somebody, somebody get his head back in the door. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. But it makes you feel good to know yes. that the saints notice yes. what your characteristics yeah. are. Mm -hmm. It's important. So if I'm off track, if I got my stuff together and you don't, now I can see you ain't pulling your weight. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just pulling your weight and coming to church every Sunday. What other way must you pull your weight? You got to pull your weight in your giving. You got to pull your weight in supporting the ministry and different things that we do. In everything the church does, we all got to pull our weight. Yes. And if one of us falls down, what do the rest of us do? Pick him back up. We pick him up, but we carry him and his weight, don't we? Yes. Hallelujah. And we do it in love, because that's what the Bible has said. Amen. And we're still within our own boundaries, aren't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. Part of what's happening in the world today is that we have become such a nosy nation. Yes. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. What they doing over there? Who that is? What? I don't know them people. What? They didn't come to your house. Right. What? Why are you so nosy? Why are you all out the window? Well, you know, Mr. James, I suspect him anyway. You suspect him before. <laughs> Every time I turn around, he got a new car. Oh, there are the people coming over there with new cars. I'm talking about hallelujah. Let me go see what Mr. James is doing. See how God is blessing Mr. James, you know. My first thing is not to tear him down, but to build him up. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. But Mr. James doing something right, isn't he? And so we give God glory and honor for what God let me in on what you gave Mr. James. Because I want to do what he's doing so I can have what he has. Are you hearing me today? Amen. But you stay within your boundaries. And when you stay within your boundaries, that's when the door will open and God takes you to a higher degree. Come on. Yes. A higher degree of dominion. Now, everybody in the church won't be there with Elder Juan. He'll go to a higher level or dominion in his gift while Sandra is still working with the folk on another level with her gift. When the time comes, we'll all be in the same place, won't we? Yes. 
But until then, there's there's work at that next level that Elder Ron has got to get to. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think he's better. He doesn't think he's... But his gift is making room for him. Are you hearing me? And God is going to use him to glorify and to take that degree to the highest level of authority that he can operate in in his life. Now, if Elder Ron is within his boundaries and he's operating to the highest level, we are a part of the body of Christ with him on. You think God going to elevate us to that degree as well if we follow Elder Ron? Yes. Sure he will. Because we are on one accord. Oh, this one accord thing is working today. There's a force that stands between you and what God has promised you. And what God is promising you is never going to change. My word is the same yesterday and today and forever. It will never change. So the word of God is going to be there. What's changing? If the word of God doesn't change, what has to change? We have to, we have to, we have to change, don't we? Yeah. Uh -huh. We got to be the one that goes from drinking infant milk to drinking powder milk to, to being elevated to the highest dimension. It's in that higher dimension that we're able to draw people closer to God. None of this is about us, remember. None of it is about you. None of it is about me. It's about our service to the Lord. Good morning, Bronnie. <laughs> A spirit that will do anything to keep from getting the gift operating in your life is what kind of spirit? What kind of spirit will cause will try to set you to a point where you can't operate in your gift. Whose spirit would do that? Satan. Satan's spirit. I wasn't asking you the name of the spirit because we rarely know those names. But what I'm asking you is if you, be, if you believe that you're walking with God and then suddenly you encounter something that you can't get through, you can't seem to get through, what do you need to do? Pray. Pray is the first thing. What else do you, you need? Some help. Yeah. How many of you know when you need help? You got to understand that every spiritual assignment, you don't necessarily need to do it by yourself. God may be sending you to lead groups of people into something, but you got to acknowledge when you need help. I was a person that could never have acknowledged that I need help when I was following my own whims because I thought I could do anything. I mean, it was just a mindset I had. I wasn't trying to be better than anybody. I just knew what was in my head, and I knew that I could get it done. And it made me sick every time I did. I was not staying in my lane, and I wasn't following God's precept. So you say you call what you're called to do. Each one of us should be able to give an, uh, uh, an explanation of what we're called to do if somebody asked us. It's that important. What are you called to do? Are you called to encourage and empower? Are you called to cast out demons? What are you called to do this morning? Who knows what they are called to do? Who knows specifically that every time they use that specific gift, something happens, and something should be happening when you use your gift. See, this is where we get stuck in the body. We all want to get up and preach. We all want to stand before the congregation. But I will tell you, that's a dangerous place to be because the Bible also tells me that God is, I'm going to have to give an account of every word I spoke to him. And I'm going to have to give an account for me and for you. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes, yes ma'am. Do, do we have something on Facebook that we need to entertain? No, I'm just reading what Cedric said. He said he may he may need to use the bathroom, guys. <laughs> He's talking about Bronnie. Oh, no, Bronnie doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Bronnie's just being a nut. <laughs> Forgive him, yeah. He just hear us. Or oh, thank you, tell him thank you. We will move accordingly. Okay. Um. 
right now in your life, can you go where you want to go? Can you go anywhere you want to go? Yeah. You I can? Say, I say okay. yeah. You feel like you can? You said you couldn't. Why? Why can you not go where you want to go? No. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. But he also said he gave you free will. Yes. He gave you free will to do what you want to do. He said, but choose. He told you the right way to choose. Choose life. Right. Yeah, he put before you life and death, blessing curse. So you, for those of you who don't know that, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Old Testament, Deuteronomy. And let's look at chapter 30. I want you to be aware <clears throat> of, now let's look at verse 15. This is what the Lord says. See, if you don't know the word of God, you can get confused. I always allow people to stop and think because the word of God tells you exactly what he, he means about everything. Okay, 15 says, see, somebody say see. See. I have set before you this day. What day? This day. Does that mean today? Yes. yes. This day. Life and good and death and evil. What's God putting before us? In your own words, what is he putting before us? Life and death. Life and death. I'm putting before you a way to live and a way to die. Okay? In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways and keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment that thou mayest live and multiply. Okay? And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess. He said if you fall in his ways, he's going to allow you to multiply. Does that sound like goodness to you? Yes. He's going to multiply you. The things you've been asking him for, God is ready to multiply them, but you got to love the Lord your God and walk in his ways, his commandments and his statutes. Mm. And then I shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess. Wherever you go to possess it, I'm going to bless you there. Why? Because you followed me. 17 says, but if thine heart turns away, so God is looking at the heart, isn't it? He wants your heart to be for him. Because if your heart is not for him, you're not for him. You can talk yourself into doing something for God, but your heart is not for him. God. Your heart is a condition. It's something that has a condition. God, a godly heart condition, or you have an evil heart condition. It says, but if thine heart turns away, so that thou will not hear me, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Verse 18 says what, Elder Ron? I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record against you this day, and you've heard me say it as I lead people to Christ, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. But this is the best part. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seeds shall live. Following God brings life. Doing the will of God brings life. Not death. It causes the heart to have an open heart. And it's like God is giving you open heart surgery. Your heart is pliable before God. But if you don't, mm. I'm going to just do it my way this time. Now you have stolen, you have literally stolen the blessings from your people. Because he's telling you wherever you go, I'm going to bless you. 
But if you don't follow in my ways, you're not going to be blessed. So you're stealing blessings from your very family. Because you're going the wrong way. How do you feel about that? About blessings of God. God loves you so much that He's given you a warning. Yeah. He's given, we have we are, we have a choice, but the thing is, God didn't leave us out there. Yeah. He gave us a choice. He spelled it out, and you have the free will to use common sense. Yes, free will, very free will. I wish I had this in another version because it's so important how He is talking to the people and sharing with them what he is going to give to us. Now, anytime you see blessings, that's what he's going to give you. And you don't know what the blessing is going to be, but I promise you anything God is going to give you is far greater than anything you have or could ever want. Hallelujah. He's bringing great, precious promises to you and to me. But we have to, therefore, choose life. So that we and our seeds may live. Have you ever gotten blessings from God to the extent that you wanted to say, Stop, God, I don't have room for no more? I haven't. I'm waiting for him. I'm waiting for him to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out blessings I don't have room enough to receive. And to rebuke the devourer for my sake. Because God can bless you and the enemy can try to come and steal it from mm -hmm. Don't forget to say, God rebuked the devourer for my sake. The blessings of God are yea and amen, which means they are settled and that's it. As long as we're in our lane and we're doing the will of God. When you hear the word blessing, what does it mean to you? What does the word blessing mean to you? You're covered with the gift of God. Covered with gifts. Okay. You know, everything that is a blessing is not necessarily a material thing. Mm -hmm. Although that is basically what we ask God for. Mm -hmm. It is not always material. What else? Anybody else have a definition? One word for blessing. Or however many words you have. Blessing. See, this is what you want from God, but you got to know what it is, don't you? Mm -hmm. When I think of blessing, personally, I think of the word abundance. Mm -hmm. I think of abundance because I'm envisioning, and this is, this is where it could help you. I'm envisioning the windows opening to me and blessings being poured into my home and my home is being overflowed with God's blessings. Now, you have to be able to see it to be it. Mm -hmm. And to receive it, you got to know that it's a fact. I'm still talking about faith in God. Because we want God's blessings, but do we really believe that God's going to give them to us? Can you believe that God's going to do for you what you've seen him do for others? You guys look like you're thinking. Believing on blessings curtails having faith. Can't get them without them. Can't get nothing from God without faith. I'm trying to dissect this thing in such a way where everywhere you go, you're going to come back to faith in God. And God loves us so much that he's willing to bless us even though we haven't done anything. We deserve no blessings. Mm -hmm. Just do what I ask you to do and I'll bless you. Mm -hmm. Just go where I say go and I'll bless you. Tell who I said tell and I'll bless you. If we did that, we wouldn't have room to receive it. Isn't that what the Bible said? He, we would not have room to receive it. Can you see that in your mind? That my house is overflowed with blessings. If y'all don't come over here and get some of these blessings, I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. 
that God has done so much for me? How can people swear that God has done so much for them when they don't even know what his blessings are? You sometimes you have hidden blessings. Yes. Well, then I found hidden blessings yesterday. Praise God. Just in, in our freezer. We didn't even know we had it there. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you said that was a blessing from God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Yeah, if you didn't know, his blessings can be hidden. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good one. Yeah. Hidden blessings. Mm -hmm. The blessings of health, the blessings of good, uh, um, uh, good prosperity means that I'm whole. We're looking at prosperity. We're not just looking at money. We're looking at our bodies whole. Mm -hmm. Our minds are solid, yes. and we are able to minister to people with a sound mind. To me, that's prosperity. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are certain people that can come and speak into me. And I believe I'm prospering from it because I believe those people are connected in a certain way to God. That's what I want us to be. I want us to be the kind of people that when we speak into others, they know they have had an encounter with God. Because if the blessing that God has placed on me, he's going to place on you, and you can place that blessing on others. But the problem is, are we willing to share the blessings when we get them? I ain't talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should. So now this is getting back to that heart thing. Yes. We should. I don't want to know what you should or want to do. I want to know, can you? What happens when you share the blessings that God has given you? It comes back to you. It's a circle. Good measure. Press, Press down. down. Shaking together. And running yeah. over what God calls men. men to give unto your bosom. Why? Because you have blessed God's people. And a blessing can go a long way. You know, when, when, when God was dealing with... Um, um, Samuel, I think, yeah, when he was a little boy, was Samuel the one that he asked, uh, what can I do for you? You have been, you know, what can I give you? You've been faithful. He said, God, all I need is to be able to, to, to judge these people correctly and reign in such a way that I'm intellectually solid in, in the folk will follow. And God said, whoa, because you asked for a blessing to help the people, and you didn't ask for a blessing to help yourself. Oh, I'm going to multiply you big time. You see how that's one? It is called the law of reciprocity. What you give out should be coming back in some form. What you share with others, it should come back to you, that very thing. Not the thing, but something on that order. Why? Because what you give, you should receive. So if you're giving out a lot of money, you ought to receive a lot of money. I don't know when it's coming. I don't know how it's coming. That's God's way. But you should be never without any money because God is blessing you as you bless others. As you are a blessing, God will bless you. God will bless you as you bless others. If he knows that he can depend on you, come on here. How many of you have ever gone and literally blessed somebody? Mm -hmm. You have? Yeah. Good. Good. Well, how did you bless them? What kind of blessing was it? To be honest with you, um, I've blessed people several ways. Okay. Um, one of the ways is my own testimony. Mm, that's um, good. Uh, the other one is money. Yes, that's what everybody wants. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's it's like you said. Well, like they say, money is, is the root of all evil. It right. is the root of all evil. But money. I'd rather give knowledge or or tell my testimony that it's gonna bless somebody else mm -hmm. that may be going through mm -hmm. or have the same thing as I have. Like like I'm a diabetic, so right. 
I meet a lot of people like that. Over mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, I, I meet a lot of people like that. But as far as testimony, I do it on my channel every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It's you testimony do. Tuesday. You do. So. You do. And it's such a blessing. What what we need to understand as we're serving God, number one, we got to understand who we are in Christ, Mm -hmm. who he made us to be. God made you to bless people. Mm -hmm. You are blessed to be a blessing. blessing. And I don't mean you got to financially bless people. Mm -hmm. I bless people every day. I say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. for Whatever the desires of your heart are, whatever you need, as you walk with God, the blessings of God will overtake you. They'll go, wow. And I'll say amen and keep walking. You have the power to bless people. Did you know that? Sometimes a simple hello blesses somebody. It blesses people. Yes, yes, very good. You have the power and the authority to bless people. And the thing I need to leave you with today is that it doesn't, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with God. You, you didn't give yourself the power. You should have tried to get more than you deserved. Yeah. <laughs> we were blessed by God for what? To be a blessing. To be a blessing. What did I say? The first thing we are to do when we get saved and, and move forward with Christ, we are called to serve. Are you serving somebody when you bless them with finances? Yes. Oftentimes you are, and oftentimes you are not. Mm-hmm. And I need you to be clear on this. I've had to go to God several times because I would bless people so much I didn't have anything. And I said, God, I don't have anything. And he said, well, that's your problem because you gave it all away. Mm-hmm. And I said, but I did it <clears throat> in your name and I did it for you. He said, I didn't tell you to bless them. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, God. That was a revelation for me. I didn't tell you to give them that. And I said, but I thought you were. He said, no, I didn't tell you to give them that. If I didn't tell you to give it to them, why'd you give it to them? I said, because they said they needed it. Well, people will tell you anything if they know they can get it out of you. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And I had a string of them that would come. Are you hearing me? And I was giving until I had run out, and he let me continue to run out until I learned the lesson. And the the lesson is I give as God has purposed in my heart to give. Are you hearing me? Listen to this Facebook. Given it shall be given, but it has to be based on God's gift of sharing with you, overwhelming desire to give from God to you. Because God may be trying to teach Sandra something or me something, and here you are blessing me. God may have withheld something from me because I haven't followed in his path. I haven't done what he said for me to do. And he's waiting on me to do what I need to do. And here you come along and bless me. Because you have not consulted with God as to whether you're doing the right thing. Has anybody ever done that? Uh And so God says that we have to wait. Y'all forgive us today. We're still training a a little puppy. I'm going to bring him in here so you can meet him. Maybe he'll be quiet once he sees you guys. Uh, no, Elder says no, he'll go crazy. But 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 the key here is that we understand why we have to give. You are you give to be a blessing. Just because somebody's there and look like they're homeless don't mean you give to them. They could be the richest person. Right. Yeah. yeah. And here you are giving out your last little bit. You haven't done anything. Uh, spectacular. You're not even following God out here just passing out money, Karen. So, should I have looked for anything back from the money I gave all those people? Why? God didn't tell me to do it. You got to move by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Now, there have been times God has said, don't speak a word in them. Don't give them anything. Don't say a word. The first time I got that, I was a little, I was like, God, I thought you wanted us to minister to everybody. He said, do not minister to them. Do not do anything. Walk away. There was something that God was teaching those people, something they hadn't done, something God had said to them. 
and I come along and do the contrary to God, now I'm taking them off their path, and I'm off my path. Mm -hmm. So we don't. We just walk away. That's not often. I've never had that happen but one time to me. So I don't believe that that's God's will for us most of the time. But I believe that God is in the blessing business. Do you? Yes. I believe that everything I touch ought to prosper as my soul continues to prosper. Isn't that what he says? Mm -hmm. And if he's going to rebuke the devourer for my sake, then I believe he will. But we have to have done our part. That's the part I'm trying to get you all to understand on Facebook. That we must be faithful to God and we must do what he says. And here he tells us that he's recording it in heaven against you. What does that mean? I call heaven and earth against you this day. That I've set before you life, death, blessings, and curses. Therefore you choose so that you and your seeds may live. What is he saying to us in that statement? He's recording what he has told you to do and, and the blessings that you will get if you be obedient to my work. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a testimony, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's also showing you he's serious about this mm -hmm. thing. I recorded this. It's going to be in heaven and on earth. Yeah, but he's got a recording on all that. Mm -hmm. But this, he's talking to us because he wants us to have blessings. Both thou and thy seed may live. You and the people who you love. Don't you want your, your family yes. to be blessed? Yes. I know I want my family blessed. And in order to be blessed, we got to follow God's precepts and do things his way. Yes. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Blessings and curses. Anybody ever felt like they were in a curse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like? What was it like to be in a curse? Because a lot of people don't know. Torment. You felt like you were tormented. Couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep. Restless. Restless. Anybody else? There was no joy. No, no happiness. Joy. No joy, no happiness. Oh, that's good. Both of them good. Yeah. You knew something was wrong, didn't you? Was your first thought that I haven't done anything that God told me to do, or was your first thought to blame somebody else? Couldn't blame on somebody else. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. I'm doing everything God says to me. Mm -hmm. Blessings and curses are sitting right on this table, and you got to pick up which one is going to be for you. And then once you pick up life and death of blessings and curses, he expects you to follow it. Not just pick it up for yourself. You think God is stupid? He knows whether you're doing, following his precepts or not. We have to be obedient to what God has said that we were supposed to do. So, God has uttered words to you. How many of you know your calling in here? Okay. What do you think you may be called to do? Anybody? I'm called to serve. You're called to serve. In what capacity? I know you're leading prayer. You and Ron are leading prayer. Yeah, praise and worship. Praise and worship. You're called to lead praise and worship. So, so you're called to serve. Sure. In the area of uh, of the gifts of uh, ministry. Yes. Who else? What is it you love to do? <laughs> Brian, what do you love to do? What I'm doing right now. You love audio. You uh, love audio, putting yeah. things together for the ministry. Yeah. And I love the scene too. And you do a great job at putting things together for the ministry. And so for right now, that is what you are doing. You also like to testify. You, you, you're moving in the evangelistic area is what you're doing. You're moving as an evangelist. Because every time you go out and witness to somebody, you evangelize. Mm -hmm. Helping others. Helping others. So you believe you're part of the help ministry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. praying for us. That's part of the help, too. Mm -hmm. Part of the help ministry. Listen, get in your place and stay there. Don't move till God moves you. Because God will do the elevating. God elevates us to a new position and a new level. God will typically not call you to be over the kitchen all your life because you can cook good chicken. No matter what pastor <laughs> said, you need to come up out of that kitchen sooner or later. Come on. Maybe God is calling you to be an usher. Typically, people who are in the kitchen ministry typically are not outgoing people who like to talk to people. Mm -hmm. They like to be left alone to do that work. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the case, and God has called us to be fellowshipping one with another, what do we have to do with the person who is an introvert? What do we have to do with them? The introvert is one who stays in, doesn't have a lot of interaction with other people. What do we have to do with them mm -hmm. to get them to be a part of the, the uh, calling together. I guess you have to train them. Yeah, get them out the kitchen first, though. Yeah. That's going to be your problem, getting them out the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pray them out do. the kitchen, Mother, yeah. so you got to pray them out of the kitchen. They've been there so long, they have a Don't let them help establish it. Mm -hmm. You've been cooking for pastor for 10 years, mm -hmm. and you're trying to take Can't care of them. Because we see a position as attached to us rather than God and service being attached to us. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. I want you to get this today. I hope you are getting it today that be a part of something in church. Don't just go to church. Be a part of something. And if you don't know, I never knew what I was called to do for many years. I just kept volunteering for things. Until I finally found the thing that worked for me. And that happens sometimes, that you have to just keep trying until you go into something that really starts stirring you on the inside. And God will show you that that's what you're called to do. Well, I have to say, I have to say, Steve. I have to say that when I first got into church, did, got baptized, because, you know, we live inside the church, so my mom was keened in on you going to church you're going to go there and do something Everybody yeah. 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 so I started off being in junior missionary yeah and then it it, it went from there to I, I told my I want to usher went from okay. ushering I didn't do audio for a while okay I done everything else sung in the choir you know uh Right hand pastor's man, you know, right. done all that, and but then you it was never like, thought about doing audio. I never thought about doing audio until yeah. I got trained for it at, at First Baptist back right. home, and I was like, yeah, this, this looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Then we was doing the camcorder. Back then it was camcorders. Yeah, and I was filming. Then I was like, you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna try this out. Mm -hmm. And then when I come to do creation, yeah, when I first moved out here, I was audio. Yeah. So now I'm still. Stuck in it, but don't get me wrong though. If God tells me He want me to usher today, I'm gonna train somebody else to do this, and yeah. I'm gonna usher. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I want to do a lot of stuff in the church. I don't want to be behind the scenes all the time. I want to be in front of the scenes sometimes. Now that's a good question because there are people who say I'm introverted and I don't want to be in front of uh, a camera. They're missing their mark. They're mm -hmm. missing the mark because they are making a decision about what they are to do right. instead of letting God put you. You are there to serve. God is putting you in it for service. Not for you to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And people who are introverted typically won't want to work where they got to be around a whole lot of people. You know. So that's one thing that we, we wouldn't have to worry about. Um, so anyway, that is where we are uh, today. So I wanted to cover these areas with you. I want you to think about and begin to pray to God for blessings. For blessings for your home, for blessings for your church, for blessings for your people and others around you. And that is my dog, which I'm going to introduce you guys to right now. If you know how to train dogs, call me, because mine is a King Charles Cavalier. And he's busy. It's not that yeah, good. He's a, he's a sweetheart. And you, you talking? That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. And this is my baby, and he is a good dog. 
um, but he just don't like to be quiet. He would not be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, he would have to be out front right. somewhere. <laughs> he is a, I said a King Charles Cavalier. He wants to sing. And he wants to sing on the choir with mm -hmm. him. So, are there he's, any, he's laying hands on people. He's laying hands on people. Are there any other comments about the word today, of, uh, about what we are called to do, as opposed to what we may be elected to do? What's our purpose? Mm. That's, you know, um, I always, well, when I was in the church, I always did. I enjoyed bringing people in to the church. And, service, yeah. mm -hmm. and why did you enjoy that? Was that because the lady said we all usher? Or no. You just it thought. It was just something that I was like. But you enjoyed that. Yeah, I and that was really good. Like very good, very good. And we have to have those ladies who have good personalities yes. and who don't mind working with people because most ushers, a lot of ushers rather, sometimes we need to go back and take some classes. Yes, we're mm -hmm. They can be really yeah. skilled. Yeah. But you see now why God has placed us in certain positions? Mm -hmm. Because we got to learn how to be kind to others. Yes. We can't bring everybody together if we're not on one accord. Yeah. And so bringing us together will help us become on one accord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anything else? Anything, Barney, you want to say? No, you did. You okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. you want to read now. Yes. Amen. Well, mm -hmm. I thank you all for your time today. How much, what kind of time did we have? Yeah, it's 12 Okay. Well, thank you all for your time today, and think about it this way, what you are called to do by God, as opposed to what you have appointed yourself to do. And God doesn't mind if you go into ministry and start working and doing things, God's not going to mind that. Hmm. But you won't get the optimum out of what God has called you to do. We want you to be in position for a higher calling. So that when God begins to elevate you, you are moving from glory to glory. And not just from position to position. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for today. And we'll see you next time. Amen. 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 Amen.